The mission is to kill the Authority and his regent, Metatron. The main characters are scattered across the world. And meanwhile, the forces of both sides, Azrael's side and Metatron's side, are gathering to fight in the final battle. Hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I have this awesome, epic finale of the Dark Materials Trilogy. The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman himself, and well, let's get right on to it. Right now, Lyra had been captured in the, you know, in the end of the book too. And when that happens, she's captured by Mrs. Coulter, and Mrs. Coulter has dragged her into the Himalayas in some cave, drugged and unconscious. And meanwhile, Lyra has been having these dreams about Robert, who his, whose dear friend who had died and is in the land of the dead. And it seems that Lyra must journey to the land of the dead. Meanwhile, Will is guarded by two angels. And he and they have been bestowed with the task of bringing Will, the wielder of the subtle knife, to Lord Asriel, so that he could fight with Asriel's army. But Will refuses. He wants to have Lyra by his side, and he isn't gonna rest until she, he finds her. And uh, angels know exactly where she is, and together they are journeying to the Himalayas, to the very cave where Lyra is. Meanwhile, Mary Malone, our scientist, our scholar, our expert on dark matter, who had talked to our dear Will and our dear Lyra briefly in book 2, is back. And she has gone into a different world of the Malefas, these intelligent creatures who use these sea pods as their little um, bicycle <laughs> wheels, I guess. I mean, they use these sea pods from these trees, and that's how they travel. And they basically have these trunks. They're basically elephants on wheels and they're about as big as a human being. That's what I imagine at least. There's no images or anything like that, you know? And yeah. And meanwhile, Will has finally arrived to Lyra. But the forces of both Lord Asriel and the Magisterium, which is basically the church and the authorities' followers, basically, they're just going for Lyra and they want to kill Lyra. Why? Because Lyra is Eve, and he ha and she has inherited her name, and if she falls, then well, that'll just inherit, that'll just make the second fall of men, like in the Bible, where Eve gets tricked by the serpent, she has to eat the, she eats the apple, and blah 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 blah, and yeah, so basically that's what happens to Eve, and yeah. And basically, the the Catholic Church, well, not the Catholic Church, the Magisterium, they cannot allow Ly Lyra to fall. So basically, they're just gonna go on and kill her. And meanwhile, Lord Asriel's forces are fighting to protect Lyra, so that whatever the fall is of Ad of Eve, she has to endure it. So so that maybe the authority, the authority of the authority, will fall. Meanwhile, you know, Metatron, so basically the Metatron is the regent, which basically means that the authority, the god, the almighty, the first angel or whatever, he basically bestowed most of his power to Metatron, and Metatron is basically the ruler at this point of life at, of, of the humans. And at the Himalayas, battle has begun. So what happened was while Will was going to find Lyra, he met Eric Brinson, who had been moving upstream this river to go to, into the Himalayas where there is snow because in the Arctic the snow was melting and the bears could learn to be the bears of the mountains or so he thought. Of course, at that point, Eric Brinson was wrong, but Eric Brinson was glad because he could fight for Lyra, Lyra Silvertongue, and that is what, well, he would like to do because Lyra is her friend and he owes Lyra his kingship and his life. And these Galli Vespian spies, who are these creatures from another world that are like this big, they ride dragonflies, they're really good spies. Lady Sal Salmarica and the Chevalier Tialis, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure how to pronounce their names, 
Um, just ignore that if I somehow mispronounce it or I absolutely butchered it. So, yeah. And those two spies, they manage to find Lyra and Will, but Will stalls, saying they have to do something else first. Lyra is saying to Will that they must journey to the land of the dead, because there's something she must do. She must make amends with Robert, and there seems to be some sort of task that Lyra and Will must do in the land of the dead. Because humans, when they die, they're not supposed, their spirits aren't supposed to go to the land of the dead. That's just made by the authority. They need to break through that, and they somehow have to make things right, to make things the way that the world is supposed to be. And so they journey to the land of the dead. Me, yeah, so they journey to the land of the dead, and they must endure leaving Pantalemon and their demons behind. Well, Will's demon is invisible, he doesn't know the demon exists, but they must leave their demons behind, and they must go to the land of the dead, and basically, in this world, their demons is kind of like their souls, a part of their souls, a part, a body part of them. They're super private, and they're, they're lifelong companions. And their demons are supposed cannot enter the la land of the dead. So Lyra and Will, Will not knowing what his demon was, and he, he, couldn't, he can't see the demon, and he leaves the demon, Lyra leaves behind the demon, and together they enter the land of the dead, with the Chevalier Tialis and Lady Salmarica, the two Gali Vespians. And together they enter the land of the dead. There, they find out that the world, the land of the dead, is simply sick. As in, it's bad. It's just a huge wasteland, a huge holding cell. All those things about if you, if you don't sin, if you follow the commandments, you can go to heaven. All that was just a pile of rubbish, apparently. Either way, you go to this empty place, all murderers and priests, it doesn't matter. You go to this empty place that is completely empty, that has nothing in it, and harpies, these demon-like creatures, everyone knows what harpies are, right? With the human heads and the eagle bodies, I'm pretty sure, or vulture bodies. <laughs> and basically, they like to torment people. And so, they are the guardians of the land of the dead. And what our dear Lyra does is that she strikes a bargain with the harpies. Because the dead has to be freed. So that they could die, truly die, and their spirits could be the part of the great cycle that makes up all worlds. They need to be freed into nature. And to do that, Will must cut through the barrier between worlds, the barrier that closes in the land of the dead to free the dead. Now, I forgot to mention, the knife itself, he kind of broke it accidentally while they were fighting the Himalayas. Eric Brinson um, made it, and he warns Will that the knife might have other purposes that he might know about, he might not know about, which is foreshadowing. Anyway, so basically, Will opens a barrier, and they, they strike a bargain with the Harpies, as I aforementioned, and basically what our dear Lyra says is, you can ask the dead their stories, their stories of their lifetime, and the Harpies could hear that, and as their payment, they would let the dead go. And the, the dead, who hasn't, who doesn't really um, have a story, or they lie about their story, they can be kept back from being free and being a part of the great cycle that makes up life and death. So they strike a bargain with the harpy and they manage to escape from the land of the dead. And they are and then they go towards the final battle between the forces of the authority and the forces of as we all know him, Lord Asriel. Metatron the Regent himself is leading the forces. And Mrs. Coulter, as deceitful as always, goes to Metatron. And she tricks Metatron into going near the void. This crack in the world that leads to nothing less. Into the void. And Azriel and Mrs. Coulter together, they hit him, they grab Metatron, and together they fall into the void. And they all cease to exist. Meanwhile, Lyra and Will is at the battlefield, and they find a crystal cage 
where the authority resides. It seems that Metatron has been taking authorities, the authority's power, and the authority was senile, he was mad, he didn't have any, any sort of consciousness, he was really just a tired old man, an old angel to be exact. exact. And the authority, when he leaves the cell, breathes a sigh and he dies. And well, now the regent and the authority himself is both diseased, cease to exist. And Lyra and Will travel to the world where Mary Malone was, where the dust came from, where where the Mulefa, the beautiful little creatures with the, you know, the trunks and the wheel pod wheels or whatever. It's kind of hard to imagine, you know. And Malefas are. And together they meet, well, Mary Malone. And apparently, in this saga, in this little story, um, Lyra is Eve, and our dear Mary Malone must play the serpent, whatever that means. And apparently Will is pretty much Adam in this story. So what happens is that um, Mary Malone talks to Will and Lyra about love and how she married and stuff. And that kind of awakens Lyra's feelings about Will, and basically they fall in love. But after they have a very brief but sweet little romance, what basically happens, there's this dude, there's this angel, and he comes, I mean, she comes, whatever. And the angel says that basically, every time you cut a barrier, the barrier between worlds, it opens a new opening into the void. And the void is like a living vortex, it's evil, it's malevolent, and it wants to suck up all the dust in the world. And if all the dust, with the capital D, disappears, then the world, anything good, everything good in the world, ends. Everything that you love in this world will end. So they must close all the gateways. That had been left open by some of the careless users of the subtle knife. And that also means that Will and Lyra must return to their own worlds, and they cannot meet ever again. And so, and so Will leaves, and uh, the angel closes all the other gateways into different worlds, and Will and Lyra says their final goodbyes. Will breaks the knife on purpose so that no barrier could be opened ever again, and thus is safe, the world has been saved, but Lyra and Will will never be able to see each other ever again. And that is the end of the Dark Materials trilogy. Now I have a couple things. So, basically, first off, this is a story, as many reviewers and many people say, this is a story about Lyra and Will growing up. Kids, basically kids, teens, who never thought about love in their life, get to know what love is and how bittersweet it is, basically, and how life sometimes just doesn't go the way you want it to go, and sometimes you just have to leave, you have to go away, and Will and Lyra has to leave each other, so that's what I think the message means, like, life doesn't go the way you want it to, you just have to deal with it, move on, you know. And another thing, I was right about the name of the series, it is called His Dark Materials, and yeah, so the three things that operate using dust or dark matter, the alethiometer, the truth seeker, and the symbol reader, the golden compass, that is the name of the first book, and that is the artifact that is, you know, pyrus dust that is in the first book. The second book, the subtle knife that can cut through anything, dimensions of the world, that is also has something to do with dark matter, another dark material, and of course, the Amber Spyglass, which is a device that Mary Malone has used in this book to see dust. It's like a telescope, it is a spyglass after all. And I think those three things are, well, they're powered by dust, they're the objects, incredibly powerful objects that appears in the Dark Materials trilogy, and each of these objects are named basically after the book. So, yeah, I think that's kind of major. And the Dark Materials, the dark materials basically means dark matter and dust, so I guess that makes sense because, I mean, the dark materials, yeah, it's a really good trilogy name. I mean, dust with a capital D doesn't have the same ring to it as his dark materials. So, yeah, I think that's what I think. And yeah, I think all these ideas were really creative, and no author ever dared 
to um, twist the Bible, twist Christianity, twist that religion into this kind of story, like Rick Riordan twisted Greek mythology stuff and Norse mythology stuff and Egyptian stuff into his own stories. He did that. Philip Pullman did that, and I really respect him for doing this. Although I am a Catholic, I'll just, just say that, but I really enjoyed this book. I don't think there's anything that's against Christianity, and it's just super duper creative. It's absolutely crazy of a ride to read, and as I said, it is a must read, and yeah, the goal is literally to kill the god of Christianity. Well, it doesn't really say Christianity, but it is basically the same. Adam and Eve, you know? And like always, your book quest or Aaron the book quest. It is a book, a fantasy book, where the mission is literally to kill the Christian god, but there's also a story of growing up, of love, of basically just becoming an adult and how life goes. So, yeah, it is a must read and it is an absolute thrill ride of a page turner. Have a great day. Have a bucky day.